All right, so this is the night before your AS paper one exam. That's going to go on for about 10 seconds and that's going to be annoying for the start of the speed. I'm really sorry about that, but let's just all chuckle. Come on, let's do this. I'll have a quick look at the thing. I have, I have four key areas for you to focus on ready for tomorrow's exam. I hope this is going to be helpful. Oh no, this is absolutely spoiled by the alarm going off. It is, they are just testing it, so I'm going to carry on in a second. <laughs> Everyone's just left. Hopefully they'll come back. And uh, I'm going to go through four key areas, <laughs> which are mechanics, some basics, some methods to answering questions, and the idea of sense checking your answers. And I'm going to do that as soon as the alarm is done, um, which will not be long. There are some suggested videos for your last night of revision um, under the uh, in the description. So go on and have a look at that. Seb's here. I'm going to, after each point, I'm going to stop and have a look through the chat. Um, loads of people here. This is going to be helpful for international A-level um, AS. This is going to be helpful for year 13 as well because you guys are preparing and one of the things, important things I suggest you do is that you go ahead and you revise the AS stuff. So preparing like you're about to do an AS exam is really, really good. Man, I should have waited for this um, alarm to finish. I'm really sorry, but uh, people are all here. We're going to go through four key areas. And also, I'm going to talk you through my list of suggested things in there. All right, I hope you can hear me loud and clear. I also forgot my lav mic, so sorry, I'm just going off the phones mic here. Um, this would be useful for, for GCSE as well, Rach. And I will stop um, after each point. I will stop um, and have a look if there's any questions, and then I'll be around for a Q&A just towards the end as well. So without further ado, let's do mechanics stuff. Okay, basic mechanics, you know, is pretty easy, speed, distance and time, stuff like that. But also uh, acceleration, change in velocity, all those kind of definitions that come up in mechanics. Um, but I want to talk to you about projectiles. It's one thing that people can find quite tricky. So I've drawn a little projectile path there, and I, this is my tip for you. Um, just make sure you separate it out X and Y. What I would suggest for you is all your calculations actually treat your answer box as having like two columns, work algebra down this way, then over down this way. So treat it as having like almost like two columns um, that you can work through just to keep yourself all spaced out. And in a projectile, make one your X column and one your Y column. Now, um, this is the path of projectile, obviously it's par parabolic. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but they're in the uh, mechanics playlist in the description if you want to have a little go through projectiles again, if you need a full run through of how to do them. But it usually works by time of flight. So usually solving a projectiles, um, uh, solving a projectiles question is about working out the time of flight. And we can know the time of flight to this point here, the maximum point, because we know the acceleration is G. So you can use any of your equations of motion and uh, with G being minus 9.81, and with the final speed being zero. So you can use V as being zero, and you can work out um, the time to this point here, times it by two if you want to work out the range. And we always model it that there's no air resistance in the X dimension. So that is projectiles just there dealt with. Always think though um, about separating your, uh, your vectors into the X and Y component, and there's a really quick rule of thumb to do that. If something's got a speed V, and we know it's an angle theta to the horizontal, which is, that is the convention, we normally give angles to the horizontal. If you are closing the angle, so you're looking for the X dimension, so you're closing the angle, then it's V cos theta. And if you're swinging the angle open to get the Y dimension, then it's V sine theta. So that's the little way to remember it. Close the angle is cos, swing the angle open is sine. So really easy. You can always get, you don't need to work through your Sokotoa, you can really quickly resolve one vector into the X and Y component by using this method here. And the last bit of um, mechanics that I want to talk about is tough moments questions. Okay, so here I've got a basic moments thing drawn out here. First thing to do with a moments question, you know, they're easy if it's one dimensional, if it's just uh, like a normal seesaw, fulcrum type situation. But if they're a bit harder, then first thing to do is identify where the pivot is. And then without looking at any idea of the equilibrium um, of moments first, identify all of your um, perpendicular distances to that pivot and resolve them first. So work out your distances. See, this one is perpendicular distance that dimension, the vertical dimension there. Work those out with their trig. OK, so you get like an expression you know, like um, this might be like X cos whatever, cos theta, work that out, that's your length, and then you can do 
your clockwise moments equals your anti-clockwise moments business, which is your, um, that is your principle of moments, that the cl clockwise moments equal the anti-clockwise moments when something is balanced. So that's the first thing, that is mechanics, okay? Any questions so far, do let me know. Um, chat's gone a bit quiet. Hope this is useful for you. Is this useful to you, chaps? Um, I know you're going to do really, really well. Remember, you've been working on this for a whole year. You've been preparing for this, so don't panic. Okay, the next bit is about basics, getting your basics right. And by basics, I mean your base quantities and your base units. I <laughs> hope nope, so easy. Definitely is. Okay, um, good. So this one is, well, these are my base units for the five base quantities. The base quantities are length, time, mass, uh, current, and temperature. Now, um, there are, there's also the candela and the mole, but we don't bother with them in physics. Um, just worry in AS and, um, and A2 physics at least, just worry about these five. And what I suggest is a really good activity for you to go ahead and do just to practice and make sure you get those base quantities right in your exam tomorrow, is that you just take your first, uh, you will take the first couple of pages of your equation sheet and that you go through them and that you take each one down to base units. So if you take, for example, force and you work out that and you express that in base units, because force is a derived quantity. These are the base quantities and we derive all other quantities from them. So we derive the unit newtons from these. Um, now, what, why have we chosen these? Because these are ones that we can actually measure. We have instruments that can measure length, time, mass, current, and temperature. So these are the, we've chosen these as being the base ones because we have ways to measure them. So in any case, if you're asked, for example, what is a watt? <laughs> well, what is the unit of power? And one way to express power is force times speed. So the unit of a force is a newton. The unit of speed is meters per second. Uh, what's a newton? Well, newton is a force, which is F equals ma, so that's kilograms meters per second squared, and then multiply that by the meters per second that we had before, and then reduce it down to its simplest form, kilograms meters squared seconds to the minus three. Now, that is a really useful thing, not just because they're going to ask you that question, express this as a base unit, but also because if you know your units, then you're doing some dimensional analysis. You're doing some quite straightforward dimensional analysis. So you know what you're trying to work out. And the, the units come from the equations. So you can always check your answer is has the right dimensions. You've combined things with the right units to give yourself the right dimensions in your answer. And it's a good way to kind of check whether or not that, whether or not that answer is sensible. Okay, so definitely make sure you're on top of your units the whole time. Make sure you're on top of unit conversions and stuff like that as well. I know that's the straightforward stuff. But I think it's a really useful exercise. It's light kind of revision, light revision, like watching the suggested videos down in the uh, multiple choice, that has <laughs> multiple choice, down in the, um, in the description. That's light vision, that's revision. That's what you want to be doing tonight. You don't want to be overstressing it. You want to be doing some light revision. So one of my suggestions is take your equation sheet and take the, the equations down to base units so that you know what you're talking about. It's good algebra practice, but it's not too heavy, it's not too stressful, and it's perfect for the night before the exam. Right, any other chat? Um, and then I'll go on for number three. So I've done two so far, and I'm doing number three next. Don't forget, suggested videos down uh, below once I finish this feed as well. Can you help with units like this? Mega electron volts is over C squared. How to convert this to mass energy? I know it's not AS, but it is a non-SI unit. So if you've got non-SI unit, then they have conversion factors within the unit. So within that, um, that is a unit of mass. If you multiply by mega and you multiply by a charge on an electron, you multiply by one volt, and then you divide by C squared, which is speed of light squared, then you get back into the base unit kilogram, right? So um, that is the point. If you've got a non-SI unit and you want to get to SI units, you follow the unit like it's a formula. And the same could be said of the kilowatt hour. If you multiply by kilowatts, uh, so 1,000, and then you multiply by um, 3,600, which is seconds in an hour, you get back to joules. So if you've got a non-SI and you want to get rid of it, if you want to get rid of prefixes or anything like that, then you just go ahead and you um, 
follow it like a formula. So I hope that helps, Lane. You just basically follow the unit like a formula. It comes in MCQ. Which one is not the unit for power? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's a, it's a really good one to practice just taking those um, units, taking those equations down to base units. Right, number three is your approach to questions. Tarry feels like you're in the wrong place. Why, Tarry? Tell me why. Tell me how I can help you better. Um, so method to answering questions is really important. There's two types of questions, basically, which is calculation and written answers. And I suggest you approach them slightly different. With the calculation ones, I think this is really, really important for you. Just look, what do you have? And you know, what information have you got? What, what, what units, uh, what um, quantities have you got? What are you trying to work out? Look for those calculations, look for the equations that can help you get from what you know to what you want to find out. Um, then go back through and check all your units, check the rearranging, write down all your working out, and then reach for the calculator. A lot of people go for the calculator too soon or they input things before they do all the rearranging. Okay, it's really important to do that kind of step by step, whatever works for you. When you read the thing, do you annotate, that's V, that's T, you know, what are the quantities that you've got? And then looking through that equation sheet to figure out how you can get to your kind of target, your kind of thing that you are trying to work out. It's really, really good advice, is the method, method, uh, method, methodical way through a calculation. But you can also be methodical through written ones as well. Again, it's about looking what clues have they given me? What information have they, have they given me to go through, um, to give me the clues to what I've got to talk about in my answer? What can I use? What can I add value to? Okay, and don't forget as well, there's one really important thing is uh, making um, uh, comparisons at the end of calculations now. They really are hot on this. So they will probably give you uh, the thing you're trying to work out and say like, uh, you know, evaluate the, um, evaluate the manufacturer's claim or something like that. You know, deduce whether this is correct. Uh, do you uh, work out, determine whether the, um, whether the student's hypothesis is correct. And that means thereafter you working out a number they've given you and then making a comparison between your calculated answer and that. So they need a comparative sentence at the end that so says, no, this student is wrong because this number is what I've worked out and that's bigger than what they say. It's bigger than their number. Think about it in terms of your crocodiles, give comparisons. That's something that I've put in the one of the suggested videos down there as well. So I talked about projectiles just at the start, Sam. Um, I'll have a quick uh, look at iNave as well. Why not? It's a good one that I like, iNave. It's a good one for understanding our basics as well, which is the drift velocity business. Basically, a current can be expressed with the equation I equals N a v e okay i'll get on with the fourth one the fourth one i'm going to do is about sense checking and stuff like that as well um so an amp is a number of charge carriers per meter cube that's what n means charge carrier density so the units of that is actually meters to the minus three and then a is area that's the cross-sectional area of the wire which is meters squared and drift velocity is is a uh, velocity is meters um, seconds to the minus one and then E is the charge on the electron which is in coulombs now this is also written as I N um, A V Q but it's the same thing okay Q means charge carrier charge and in this case is the charge on the electron in this case it could be anything it could be charge on an ion but here you can see now that all the meters are going to cancel and I just get coulombs seconds to the minus one so this equation is just equivalent to uh, an amp, a, a charge per second, a, a, you know, rate of flow of charge. So the drift velocity is how fast the actual charge carriers are going. And it might surprise you that it's sometimes quite small. Like in a current of one amp in a normal size wire, you're going to have a drift velocity of sort of millimeters per second. So it's quite small. But electricity, you know, it happens quite quickly because the interaction between those electrons, you know, you do a force on one, it does a force like a domino effect, and that happens at the speed of light because of the um, because of its electromagnetic interaction. So yeah, it you know, literally is governed by photons which travel at the speed of light. So um, it's an amazing thing. I hope that helps, hope that makes sense. That's called the transport equation, which is one way to work out a current if we know the charge carrier density, N. We, if we know the area of the thing, the area cross-section area of the wire, if we know the drift velocity of our charge carriers V, and we know the charge in each one, which is E. All right, I hope that helps, buddy. And obviously, you can work out any of the others.
by rearranging it's i i knave is what i like to remember right the fourth one the fourth thing to think about tonight is just sense check so at the end of your calculation does your number you've calculated make any kind of sense if you're working out the speed of a car or something and you get a number bigger than the speed of light then stop a minute and you know <laughs> that's not going to be correct is it okay so think does it make sense if you're getting hundreds of meters per second and you're working out you know you're talking about average speed on a on a bike then that's going to be like 200 miles per hour that doesn't make any kind of sense so really really think about that um checking does something make sense uh in terms of energies you know like an energy of um one joule is equivalent to raising like a hundred grams through one meter one newton through one meter is one joule so if you're working out energies and you're getting masses or you're getting really small you know if you're working out the energies involved in an aeroplane and it's in like hundreds of joules well that doesn't make any kind of sense does it that's, that seems too small if you're working out um you know some energies in the lab i'm talking about 10 gram masses and and we're getting mega joules then that's going to be too large so does it make some kind of sense you know i remember once one of my uh, mentors when i was a young physics teacher we were working out um uh pressures and the pressure was like two kilopascals you know and it was like me blowing into something and the, the sensor said two kilopascals was the pressure that i was doing so that seemed a bit big though two thousand pascals and she said no no does that not make sense like could you not imagine that pressure you blow into that very small tube would be equivalent to two thousand newtons if it was the same pressure on a whole meter squared you know she did this and I thought, oh hang on a minute yeah you know, actually that tiny little area i was doing it would be equivalent to the same pressure of 2000 newtons on one big meter squared so if you sense check then then you can kind of think yeah you can kind of believe that that makes kind of sense um so definitely do that definitely when you're checking for the answers a really important thing i've lost track at the time of the times when I've marked students work and I've been like, oh, really? Like, um, you think the electrons are going to have that big an energy individually? That's really important. Right. OK, um, let's have a look. Um, did I cover answering long written questions? Yeah, um, oh, I didn't, did I? Uh, how to kind of, yeah, back to point three. Thank you. So when you're reading a question, and this is one of my bits of advice, when you're reading a question is actually read it twice. What I do now, I know I'm a teacher and I'm supposed to know it all anyway, right? But what I do now is I read the, what, I read the last line of the question, the instructions, and I look at the command word before I read any of the rest of the question. And then I read the, the question after that. So what I suggest is you basically read twice. The first time thinking, right, what is this question actually asking me to do? And the second time thinking, well, what information do I have to enable me to do that? And if you do that with written ones as well, you first thing you do is look for the command word, then your response is going to be at the right level. And then the very last thing you do when you check a written question is you ask yourself, have I done everything I've been asked to do? So you go back through and you look for those command words, which hopefully you've underlined from the very start. And you've kind of, you kind of think, do I, um, <laughs> do I, kind of, these comments are often just put me off my train of thought, which is fine, it's good, it's funny. Um, but I'll come back to that one. Uh, <laughs> have I actually done everything that I've been asked to do? And have I RTFQ'd? Have I actually read this question um, in enough detail? Have I done what I think the question is asking me, not what exactly what the question is asking me to do? Anyway, there's some good um, suggested videos down in the, um, in the description as well. What is there down there? There is a Newton's Law summary, which is a really useful thing for your, um, really useful thing for uh, the, um, mechanics in the next paper in the paper t tomorrow okay there's a edxl paper one run through which is really really good uh, just me taking you through an exam in about an hour okay um probably try and pause that video at different points and think for yourself before um, not just listen to me make it all seem super easy um the the stream that i did last year at this time so last year's the night before some similar advice but maybe some other things as well and also um, there's a little playlist of some unit one stuff that i did on uh, A Level Physics Online, and also there's my mechanics playlist as well. Now, um, yeah, materials in Edexcel is unit two, is paper two, um, uh, but materials might well be unit one for you um, if you're doing a different exam board. So it's electricity and it's um, mechanics for, uh, it's electricity and it's mechanics for Edexcel, but it's definitely mechanics and it's definitely 
all this stuff about you know the basics of how physics works, SI units for every single exam board, that's always in the first one. As are your practicals, don't neglect to be revising your practicals. And um, they are going to ask you some synoptic questions as well, don't forget, which could draw on any part of the syllabus. Okay, there's one context, several different parts of the syllabus within that. But I would encourage you just to not panic about that. And I would, I would um, encourage you to really just think, what part of the syllabus can I apply to this? And it'll probably be quite a straightforward answer. There's one more tip as well that was from my uh, examiner's report thing. If they've done pages of questions about energy stores, right? So they've got, so there's question 15, let's say, and the whole thing's been about calculating energy stores, right? And then the last question is a written explain answer. That explain one is going to be about energy stores as well, most likely, right? So it's almost definitely going to be about the same content that the rest of the question was. So if you've been spending ages um, writing about Hooke's Law, or calculating with Hooke's Law, then, and then they ask you to explain what's going on in this spring, it's probably going to be about Hooke's Law, the answer to that. I hope that makes sense. Um, those are really useful things. Right, a couple more questions, and then I'm going to go. Um, Rachel asks, do, if you just put down the correct formula, you get a mark. Um, you could at GCSE if it's recall, but at A-level, you're not going to get a mark for the correct un, um, formula. What I would suggest to you is write down the formula, and put some sensible numbers in. So, you know, if you can't work out what meet, what distance you're supposed to use, uh, but you, you know you need to work out a speed, then writing down the formula won't necessarily get you a mark, but putting down a distance divided by a time will get you a mark because uh, then you've used it. So the mark is for use of the formula. So remember that, don't just write down um, the formula, put some numbers in that's gonna, that will get you a mark. If I see as an examiner, if I see some, um, just a raw formula, I don't give it a mark unless GCSE is remembering the formula. Uh, might be worth a mark. Um, but at A level, if I just see the formula with no numbers in it, it doesn't get a credit. The mark is for use of. Make sure you put some numbers in. It's the reason why you must show you're working out. It's the reason why, even if you are not sure what the question's really asking you to do, but you recognize you've got a few bits of data and you recognize you've got a formula that links them and gets you something out, gets you something else, it's the reason why you should do that. You should show that working out because it's probably credit for use of one of those formulas that's sensible. Okay, so definitely, definitely do that. Uh, with those kind of calculation ones where you've given the data that you're supposed to get to, then you can work the opposite direction. You can work from that and get work back. But just remember to give that comparison at the end as well. I think I'm waffling a little bit now. Last few bits then, um, is it normal to get halfway through, um, <laughs> like uh, bored halfway through papers or am I just stupid? What is your advice to Lane, everybody? Elaine gets bored halfway through exam papers. Um, well, <laughs> you're probably lucky because if you're not stressing out, then you know, you're know probably getting bored. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I mean, like, in the real thing, I, I, I was never really bored during the actual exam paper because I was just like all about getting the marks, I guess. Um, but um, during them for practice, yeah, it can sometimes get a bit boring, can't it? Okay, so I don't know, maybe like, maybe that's your exam technique. Maybe you ought to think about it slightly differently. Maybe you ought to go tackle some of the harder bits first or at least have a look at them so you can be thinking about them. Be thinking about, oh, that's really ob obvious, you know, maybe jot down a few formula. Um, have, have a look at the hard ones, jot down a few formula. You don't have to work through it in order if you don't want to. If you get bored of a bit, skip it. Um, why not? So if you if you know your very weakest area or the bit that takes you longest is your um, is your kind of written ones, your longer written ones, you maybe save that save them to last. Um, save them to last. Um, I don't know, whatever that whatever gets you through it, buddy. I wouldn't worry about it. But you've literally fallen asleep from some GCSEs. Well, I don't recommend you do that. But you know, like. Um, I don't know, you seem to have done all right so far, buddy. So I think think of it as determining your life and death. No, don't go that far <laughs> because it doesn't determine your life and death. One of the things you should think about is like, is it going to get you onto what you need to do next year? And if you're doing AS and you just need to get past to be able to do A2, then don't overstress it, you know, go in there and do what you need to do. Um, just think about it as being like a little hurdle. Um, think about it as being like something that, that if you're prepared for it, if you've done enough work, and think about it as being something that you, whatever grade you get, that you actually um, should be proud of that grade. And that's my advice all the time. If you have worked hard enough, then you should think about it as being completely, um, 
completely happy with whatever grade you get. Uh, you're not alone. I counted many panels errors on the ceiling ones, <laughs> laughing my socks off. Um, yeah, no, I can remember finishing early and being bored, but I think that's different from like being being bored during the actual thing. Um, okay, right. I'm going to say Tara now. Um, there's some uh, instructions though. This is your instruction: is to go through those recommended ones um, in the description. This is what I've got for you in the description, everybody. Summary of Newton's Laws. There's a, a paper one run through. There's last year's feed that I did just like this, um, night before AS paper one. There's some other exam questions on the Alpo channel. Um, and also there's my mechanics playlist. Obviously there's loads more on Guerrilla, for Guerrilla Physics. Have a little look around. Um, there's loads of stuff out there, but don't overstress it tonight. Get yourself a good night's sleep. Make sure you've got all your equipment, everything. Make sure you got. Make sure you know what you're having for breakfast, for lunch. Is it morning or afternoon tomorrow? Somebody tell me. Um, I do know it's in my phone somewhere, but I'm using my phone to stream to you guys. I know you're going to do really, really well. If you're here right now and you've been here before and everything like that, then you'll you'll probably um, you're probably well prepared. And you know, I absolutely believe in you guys. Uh, it's the morning, yeah. So so be ready. Get yourself a good night's sleep tonight, dudes. And um, don't, you know, ignore the PlayStation until um, halfway through June and then have the best summer that you can. All right, dudes, um, don't need luck. You don't need luck because.